Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Julie's Orchids. So today's episode, we're going to do a follow-up on the first time flowering of my native Western Australian terrestrial spider orchids. Now, I'm going to say this, I missed the mark. I did get one flower open. Uh, that was the weekend that I kind of threw my back out again and spent the rest of the weekend in bed. And then I thought, oh, I'll just wait till the next weekend and then well time got away from me and then the next weekend came and that next next weekend ended up being this weekend and in that brief period of time it got ridiculously hot here in Perth so hot that uh, good chunks chunks of Western Australia are burning and yeah so the Sun has released its evil death rays of hell upon uh, Western Australia a few months sooner than normal. Uh, so this is November, end of November. Normally Western Australia's heat, hot, bad heat, uh, hits in uh, late December, January, early February before we start getting the cool off again. Um, but yeah, no, we've decided, uh, thanks to El Nino, that uh, the hot baby hot's gonna happen now. We've got a lot of fires and I have some explaining to do on why I didn't show you the Western Australian native um, Caledonia spider orchid that uh, I have and why I won't be able to show you any of its blooms this year because, well, crap happens in the orchid hobby. Now, as I mentioned in my last video on this particular plant is that we had three um, flower spikes and you can see that we still do have three flower spikes and you can see here what is left of the flower, <laughs> the only one that actually made it to opening, and um, see it looks a little bit burned. Uh, that's because it is, it is just quite a little bit burned. Um, we were like 40, 40 degrees the other day, and I completely forgot to pull this little bad boy out of the windowsill and away from the direct line of the sun quite as much, and then I went to work, and it was, you know, hot as hell. And, well, even Western Australian native orchids couldn't hold up to it. And I'll sort of explain why this particular native Western Australian orchid couldn't hold up to the heat. Uh, the, the caladinias and the spider orchids um, are typically from a bit more uh, down south. And Western Australian is a, is a huge state. And, you know, you drive four hours or five hours down south and the weather and the climate changes quite dramatically. So these are from an area further south in Western Australia where it doesn't necessarily get as hot and as dry as it does here. Generally these things grow sort of in the scrubby under brushy areas where they don't get hit with the full heat of the Western Australian sun. Julie here completely forgot to pull it from in the windowsill in the office to sitting on the desk and it got fried. Now, yes, it did get fried and it's in the middle of going into dormancy, but I'm saying that it got fried because of what the flower spikes did. It just absolutely wilted them. Now, this is what it's supposed to do. So it's supposed to start going into dormancy this time of year, but it's not supposed to have your flowers, spikes, do that. Uh, that's not broken. This part of the flower spike right here, um, had a really strong ray of sun hit that that particular spot. And yeah, so I don't think this one's gonna open. <laughs> this is a gift to the Western Australian native work of gods. That, that is what I'm giving to you this year. Maybe next year we can get a bloom. And our one last holdout of hope is that one right there. I can't get it to focus in on it. You know, I've got one last um, bud that may or may not make it. This one here. If it does actually manage to bloom, I'll, I promise no matter how bad my back is hurting to, to at least do a short on it. Um, but I think, I think I missed the boat, boat for this one completely. Uh, again, learning curve. Once uh, the heat, heat, heat starts coming, I need to pull these back out of the window. Um, they go 
go great in the office window, literally directly in the windowsill, uh, all through fall, winter, and spring so far, with the exception of these really hot days. Now, normally these things are completely dormant by the time we get those really hot days in, you know, late December, January, early February. These things are already just dried up leaves and gone. So they're not used to that direct hot, hot sun. And if it will tell you anything about how wicked the sun here is in Western Australia, it will burn, cook, and kill even the native plants. And when it's 40 degrees, it's a tinderbox out there everywhere. And uh, yeah, this is just what happens to them. So there you go, guys. I, I'm real sorry I, I missed the mark on the Western Australian native uh, spider orchid in bloom. This is what's left of the flower that, I mean, it literally was open for a day or two and then the sun just cooked it, just absolutely cooked it. And yeah, why did I forget to pull it back from the sun? Because part of my he head thought, oh, you know, it's a Western Australian native spider orchid. It should be fine with our Western Australian sun. Nope, absolutely not. This thing is from four hours south of where I'm at. Uh, four hours south of where I'm at is an entirely different climate. It's much cooler. Uh, they sometimes get snow down there. And where I'm at four hours north, it's you know, it's much hotter and much drier. So yeah, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If by chance that one little lone bud actually makes it, I'll do a video on it, but don't, don't count on it because this thing is going into dormancy hard and fast. Uh, so the rules on how to care for this thing in Western Australia is if it's raining, water it. If it's not, don't. So it hasn't rained. I'm not watering it. This is what it's supposed to do. It's going into dormancy and we're just going to have to forfeit these flowers this year. All right, guys, thank you again for watching. If you liked the video, please give me a big thumbs up. A subscribe would be fantastic. Everybody have a happy and wonderful, lovely day. And if you're in Western Australia, keep cool because it's another scorcher out there and keep safe. There's several fires still burning.